Hey guys, that's your commander today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you here chilling with me today, talking some raid. Hey, trigger warning, uh, big disclosure, everything that I have to say, raise the alarms right now, guys. Pay to win warning, pay to win warning. Now you've been warned and you can't complain about it in the comments. This is our job. As the shirt says, ladies and gentlemen, be kind to your average neighborhood content creator for Raid Shadow Legends. I actually say all that because I, I made a video a few days ago, maybe last week or whatever, about uh, I need to recommit myself. I fell off my raid game, right? I need to recommit myself to actually farming every day in Doom Tower, to, you know, uh, uh, farming dungeons, uh, the whole nine, getting better artifacts on my account. And, you know, a few of you guys were also motivated in the comments. But a few of you in the comments also said, Ash, you know, who do you use? Who who would you consider to be the best champions on your account in terms of the builds? Like, what builds are you proud of uh, specifically? I don't know if pride is the right word to attach to something that, well, took me a lot of time and money to get eventually in this game. But I'm going to highlight 10 crown jewels, I guess? Is that is that an appropriate? The 10 crown jewels of my account. The fabulous life of the rich and famous. When Ash parties, Ash parties hard. I can't do that voice for the life of me, man. I need to bring Hades on or Saf or something. And like, when Ash parties, he goes hard, ladies and gentlemen. He owns 15 yachts. You will never see me again. Okay, sorry guys, I will stop trying to do that. Anyway, starting out guys with the dude who in my last shard opening, or actually the shard opening before that now, uh, Inithwi Blood Twin. I fully empowered Inithwi Blood Twin, and let me tell you, man, he went from one of my, and, and to be fair, he should have been a champion that I used a lot more way sooner than fully empowering him, but he went from a champion that I never used to now one of my most used nukers. Actually, in the arena, in PvP, and the 3-Blood Twin is my number one most used attack-based nuker. That's crazy. Mainly because of Sun Wukong and every reviver known to man being in the meta right now. So, this build, I'll show you the total stats. I'll quickly run through like where I'm using these champions. I'll show you the artifacts on them. My idea here isn't just to, to brag or whatever. Big bands, I'm not paying you with no credit. Yeah. Because it's not much to brag about, right? You open enough shards, you'll get these champions, and you'll get to empower them, right? But it's really about the type of build, where I'm using this, and I hope to maybe inspire somebody, even if you don't have all these champions, inspire you with the build and why I'm using them the way that I do. Anyway, you can see he's at 191 speed, 8,600 almost on the base attack, uh, 104 crit rate, 322 on the crit damage. Now, he's pretty slow, but that's actually by design. I have him in a six piece stone skin. I tried out Savage, I tried out Lethal. I even tried him out in Savage and Lethal with Necrit the Great. I did not have uh, as good results as I did with six piece stone skin, right? Sacrificing a little bit of ignore defense, but man, having an Anithwi Blood Twin with stone skin for two turns, it's, it's like you can feel the opponent on edge, right? He just taps you and you're dead for life, right? So uh, I really, really like this Anithwi Blood Twin build. I love this Anithwi Blood Twin and I'm using him everywhere. I got attack, crit damage on the amulet with crit damage uh, as an ascension. I have attack with more attack as an ascension on the ring i have crit damage on the gauntlets with crit rate as an ascension i have attack with defense on the chest i have attack percentage on the boots with attack percentage i just need to farm a little bit more sand devil here and i will get more defense and more attack man that attack's going to be very high uh it's some hp same thing with the hp on the ascension stat on the shield so not all the way there but we're definitely close uh he's also five star awakened i am one star away money can buy you anything anything you like and i am saving up everything i don't have enough right now even if he did come to my shop so i'm not looking at the shop because i don't want to feel bad about it uh but i will buy that last star once i save up enough i have soul reap on this dude right I've actually talked a lot about this, but I've switched a lot of my nukers into Soul Reap. I feel like not just PvP, but I feel like Soul Reap is 
I think it's underrated in PvE. Like, you can tackle a boss with 14% HP. That's a lot of HP less, uh, left, excuse me. And you can do a lot of damage on this ability, right? And then obviously, if you get to six stars, you get the extra speed, attack, and crit damage, and a 20% threshold with 100% true fear, especially in the arena. I love soul reap i really really do uh why is he so good because of final doom enemies killed by this champion cannot be revived it's super important to say guys i'm not going to go through all these enemy all these uh these uh champion kits it's super important to state though on an ithwi blood twin this synergizes with soul reap so the reaper when he comes in and kills somebody uh, they will not be able to be revived. That's not the case with most block revivers. And it's in the wording here. Enemies killed by this champion. Most block revives say enemies killed by this skill. When the Grim Reaper comes in with Soul Reap, it's not considered the skill, but it is considered the champion. So Soul Reap, especially on block revivers is really good uh, obviously for legendaries uh here are the masteries uh basically my favorite an arena kind of build here in terms of the offensive tree come down a uh, ruthless ambush bring it down helm smasher opportunist as well because i do tend to run uh some kaimar here and there as well as you know a torment and whatnot so i like having the uh the opportunist uh okay let's go ahead and swap to number two guys in no particular order, by the by the way, on these champions, I have Helicath. I have Helicath plus four empowered. I have him a one star awakened. So, you know, maybe we'll get lucky and get more awakening on this dude. But Helicath, I took, I rebuilt my entire clan boss team just so I could free up Helicath to use him in the arena. By the way, not every champion, but most on today's list. Are you okay? I get choked up when I talk about Helicath, man. Most of them are actually uh, uh, arena champions, PvP champions, live arena champions, because when I'm gonna min-max a champion, uh, I feel like it just goes a lot like longer in terms of ROI in a PvP environment where everybody's trying to do the same thing. Whereas oftentimes, if you can clear the content, it's just a matter of maybe shaving a second or two off your time in PvE, not a matter of win or lose once you have that down. Ergo, I put more time into my PvP champions in terms of, uh, you know, giving them the best of my artifacts and resources. Anyway, Helicath, man, he's my Nuka Kath. Nuka Kath? That doesn't really have a ring to it, does it? No. Nope. But I built him to be a nuker, and boy, is he a good one, man. Uh, this dude can take down anybody and everybody with that A1 that ignores block damage and shield. He's got a decent amount of HP, a lot of defense, 6,600, 233 on the speed, 100, 299 on the crit rate, crit damage, uh, and a little bit of resist in there as well. Not enough accuracy to dependably land the weaken against tankier, kind of high resist targets, but it's okay. Uh, he's still incredibly good. So again, all out nuker build. He's in Savage. He has Helm Smasher. He's got crit damage as well. Savage and crit damage or lethal and crit damage are usually my favorite way to build the nuker. Obviously, we had Stone Skin on Nithwi, so there are obviously exceptions to every rule. Uh, we have him on defense with accuracy on the banner. We have crit damage with crit damage on the amulet. We have defense with defense in terms of ascension stats on the ring. We have speed on the boots with defense percentage. We have defense percentage with HP percentage percentage on the ascension on the chest and then we have crit damage we don't need the extra crit rate he's already at 100 on the gauntlets uh let me go ahead and show you quickly i have lightning cage as a uh blessing again it's only one star awakened so you know we just we want lightning cage i feel like that was the way to go for a one star uh on the masteries Again, Nuker build, same, very close. He has Cycle of Violence instead of Opportunist, but everything else is the same as the Anithui Blood Twin on the Masteries. So yeah, Helicath is an amazing Nuker. That A2 smacks in the A1 that he's using every single time that somebody attacks somebody with block damage. He's going in there and he's, again, ignoring that shield and block damage. So freaking good. Uh, and does so much damage, really good multipliers. So I run usually he, and let's just talk about my other favorite nuker. My three nukers that I use the most in live content, live arena, or just arena in general, are a Nithui Blood Twin, Helicath, because I built, have him built as a nuker, and Harima. So Harima's number one. How dare you? In live arena, most times I'm picking Harima first, if I'm picking first. If I'm picking second, I'm usually going with Harima and Yameko, some control, uh, or uh, Marichka or something like that. Anyway, Harima, 
I have her fully awakened plus one empowerment on Harima. She's my only fully awakened nuker that I use on a routine basis. I do have Halakath as well. Or excuse me. I have uh, uh, Foley, excuse me. I have Foley fully awakened, but uh, I don't use him as much as the others, even though uh, he's a big staple on my Fire Knight hard team. Anyway, Harima. She is, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, she might be the crown jewel of my account. She's my favorite nuker in the game. Uh, she's got 6,800, almost 7,000 on the defense, which I'm pretty proud of. To get almost 7,000 defense and then have her at 222 speed, 100 and 300 on the crit rate, crit damage. Uh, it's tough to get all those stats and have her as fast as she is. Uh, the accuracy is a bit low at 215. But keep in mind, uh, you know, I really love this. Pa I mean, this passive is so good, right? Uh, enemy ignore defense effects are decreased by 50% is is just so crucial and so powerful. Uh, but she also uh, can't land weak hits against demon spawn faction. Uh, moreover, her, res her provoke, excuse me, cannot be resisted of the champions from demon spawn faction, which I define is probably the most popular faction in all of arena. So a lot of times I don't even need a lot of accuracy on that provoke. But the squishier units, seldom do they have over 250 resistance or 230, excuse me, uh, on their resistance anyway. So that would be, if I had to nitpick, the one area that I would change. Uh, on Harima, I have uh, defense with some resist on the banner. I have crit dam or defense with crit damage. I'd rather have crit damage with crit damage, but look at this, a trip roll of crit damage. So, I mean, all things considered, I think it's a great amulet for her. Uh, we have HP with a trip roll of defense again here. I mean, really good ring, mythical here. Uh, I have a stone skin boots on her. You, I've said this a million times before, guys, but stone skin, when you're going to go one piece, why not go stone skin or protection, right? You get the bonus 8% uh, HP or I forgot what it is, a 30 resistance maybe on protection. Either way, it's a, it's a great bonus to have, right? Look at these boots, guys. Mythical. So I have a defense percentage boots on her. Great crit rate, crit damage, some speed, and I'm still able to get to 222 speed with the defense percentage on the boots. I have defense percentage, obviously, on the chest as well, and then I have a uh, crit damage on the perception gauntlets. This is just a one piece here, unfortunately. Uh, I should look for some really good perception defense percentage on the boots. I just don't think I have one. That's the problem. You guys can see the rest of the artifacts. If we go to the masteries, again, we have cycle of violence of variation, the same masteries that we saw on uh helicath uh with the exception of the defense tree you could definitely make the case that i should maybe go support over defense but i love having a uh, blast proof and i love having resurgent on my champions so there it is it is harima the nuker all right guys let's shift gears a little bit and go for some support champions and again i realize and apologize that these are all like the most powerful champions in the game uh marichka i don't have taurus I do have Marichka. I have her built in a bolster set. I love building at least two champions that I'm using a ton in live arena or in arena uh, in a bolster set. That way, if one gets banned, I have another one. For me, everybody's different, but for me, I don't go into a live arena battle without bolster on one of my champions. So Marichka is one of them. Uh, the other one who I usually run in, I actually have a few, right? So it depends on the the you know the, the team that I'm going against. Uh, I have Pythion also in in bolster, but I'm not super proud of that build. Anyway, I digress. Uh, we have bolster set protected 30% HP uh, shield on all allies for three turns, which is great because she's bringing a protected strength in as well. So she's all about protection. She's got a one piece stone skin on there for even more HP as well. Her total stats here are going to be 109k on the HP, almost 4,000 on the defense, 239 on the speed, and 472 on the resistance. So I'd like to get that resistance maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, the reason I like resistance on her is obvious. On any cleanser that I'm using in the arena, if possible, I like to build them with as much resistance as humanly possible. That way they can cleanse the debuffs off everybody else who doesn't have high resistance, right? So we come in with the cleanse or we can come in with the, the, just one of the best heals in the game. I think it's the best heal in the game. It's a 40% of this champion's max HP. That's like 42, 41K heal. Uh, enough for a complete heal, right? For a lot of champions in the game. And then we get the shield and a protected strengthen. 
Come on, man. That's a, that's that's insanely good heal. Uh, yeah, Marishka's incredible. I have Intimidating Presence on her. It's a three-star. Uh, plus, I get a 400 defense, which is really, really good to get. I have, for Masteries, Defense and Support. Uh, so all those Healing Masteries really bump that heal up to like 48, 49k with the Lay on Hands and everything else. And that is going to be enough to pretty much complete heal everybody that I'm running, uh, with the exception of some of my other supports who are, you know, tankier anyway. On the defense, what are we doing here on the defensive side of things, Ash? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, we go with resistance and we end with resistance. As I mentioned, I like to have high resistance on these champions. You could definitely make the case that maybe I should come over with retribution instead of deterrence here uh, before I go down to unshakable, but I think we're splitting hairs here. That is the build. Uh, improved parry, very good in the arena as well. Arguably better than blast proof. Blast proof mitigates damage from all AoE attacks, whereas improved parry mitigates damage from critical attacks. But yes, she is my bolster champion. She's my support champion. She's my healer. Heck, she's my my, my reviver as well uh the speed i could tend i could i could stand to get a little bit faster with her in terms of speed as well i do have speed on the boots i have hp percentage on the chest i have hp percentage on the gauntlets i have hp on the banner h defense hp on the ring and defense on the amulet uh it might seem unwise to go defense over HP, especially with not a ton of good HP. I do have a mythical uh, HP one, you know, roll, no roll, I should say. Uh, however, I don't like to totally neglect HP, even on uh, bolster champions. Ideally, especially for where I am right now, I really want all my champions, especially my supports, over 4,000 defense. So a little bit shy there too. She's just so good that I'm eas easily able to kind of circumvent uh, some of those maybe little flaws in the kit. And by the way, guys, pick me apart here. Pick me apart on anything that you see that you're like, I don't know why you did that, man. I would like you to do this, or I would have done this this i would love to hear from you guys let's see i didn't have duchess on my list but i do want to give her an honorable mention i use duchess a lot i use duchess a lot uh she is uh defense she's all about defense she's just a very tanky she doesn't have the highest resistance uh but she has 7100 on the defense 247 on the speed and 81k on the uh the hp but i do use uh, again duchess i use her in two ways i use her in seer activation teams uh, as well as, you know, various other areas throughout the game where I need a good reviver, a great reviver, damage mitigator, uh, but primarily, again, in the arena. I actually, one of the rare champions on my, my entire account that I have iron skin on, but I really wanted to get that defense over 7,000 and just make her an absolute monster of a tank with the damage mitigation. That way I can run her with, like, a Pytheon and get double damage mitigation. It's so tough to kill her, right? Uh, I have Ward of the Fallen on her. So I guess a little bonus add in there for you on duchess i did want to show you my siffy and rotos really quickly they're both are empowered plus four on siffy and rotos uh remember wait, wait, wait what's what's going on with his eyes so I have Intimidating Presence on Siffy the Lost Bride as well. Siffy, I've actually done a guide on recently. I'm messing around with her build a little bit. I can't, I gotta be real with you guys. It's an OP build, but I'm not super, super happy with it. I don't even know why. It's what I'm doing is, is I want my cake and I want to eat it too. Is that the saying? It's so dumb. I don't even get that saying. I mean, I get it, but it doesn't really make that much sense. I I'm going for everything all at once here. She doesn't excel in one area. When you see 618 resist, you don't go, wow, that's out of this world. You go, yeah, that's really good. 358 speed, you don't, well, that's really good, but it's not the fastest. Again, that's really good resistance, but not the fastest. 6200 defense, really good, but just not the tankiest. Same thing with HP, right? So it's kind of a give as much love to those four stats speed defense hp and resistance as i possibly can while not neglecting any of them so i have a righteous and two speeds ideally i'd have three righteous sets on her and get another 80 resistance in that kit i did swap out i used to have her with more resistance uh but i swapped out the chest 
So now I have defense percentage instead of resistance on the chest. So we made a big sacrifice there to make her a little bit tankier because she was dying too, too quickly uh, with the resistance on the chest. I have a quad roll of resist on the defense uh, amulet. And then I have defense on the ring. I obviously have speed on the boots. I have defense percentage as I just shown on the righteous uh, chest piece. And then I have defense percentage with unfortunately attack percentage on the uh, gauntlets there. So that's my Siffy guys. Uh, I mean obviously a staple of anybody who has her who's lucky enough to have this champion i have her went down and i picked up uh unshakable i did make that change that i spoke about that i should have done on retribution especially on siffy we want our counter attacking as much as possible uh little tiny heals but we'll take it right we'll take it uh and then we can you know go for the healing masteries as well uh again not much in the way of healing but we do really want to pick up lasting gifts on siffy the lost bride and keep in mind when i say not much in the way of healing obviously Obviously, it doesn't uh, pertain to retribution uh, on the counterattacks, but it does pertain to her passive uh, eternal bond. Heals each ally by 10% of their max HP at the start of their turn. So that's my Siffy the Lost Bride, guys, on Rodos. Oh, Rodos. Rodos is just a beast, a boss. Love Rodos. I have him two star awakened plus four uh, empowered. And the total stats on Rodos the Lost Groom. We have almost 60k HP, which is very hard to do. HP makes a massive difference on Rotos the Lost Groom, right, guys? Uh, we have almost 60k, but we're scaling from 11,895. It's tricky to get it up at that high, but it makes a dramatic impact on his multipliers. We want a lot of HP, and we also want a lot of attack. So he's tough to build, but if you can pull it off, he's going to be a monster. So we have 60-ish, rounding up a little bit, 60k, 5,100 on the attack, 209 speed, 101 and 328 crit damage yeah he's a monster he's a beast guys what can i say it's rotos uh hp on the banner we have crit damage on the amulet and then we have hp on the ring obviously i'm definitely gonna recommend everybody go hp on the ring and hp on the banner on your rotoses because it's easier to get that flat stats that don't need to worry about the low base hp because it doesn't scale that well uh we have speed on the boots we have hp percentage on the chest and then we have crit damage on the gauntlets you could go attack percentage on the chest as well i've tried both out and honestly the damage is very slightly in favor of the hp percentage even though it doesn't scale that well versus attack now granted i do have that nice double attack roll plus six percent so 24 percent just on the uh the substats there uh in terms of masteries on rotos we have helm smasher the same thing this is my favorite arena kind of build uh out there for nukers all right, guys, Yameko time. Yameko is nice and simple, man. We're building her as fast as we possibly can with as much accuracy as we possibly can. It's easy for you to say. So there's the defense. I went support tree. I ended in on uh, on Eagle Eye. I obviously don't need uh, Master Hexer. Uh, so we went with Spirit Haste, okay? Uh, but again, the build, Temporal Chains. I love going Temporal Chains on my Alikas, my Bashers, my Warlords, my Yamekos, right? Uh, we're going to have super high accuracy anyway. Uh, decreases enemy speed by 5% for each active buff up to 15 percent that's a very very powerful okay uh so total stats 364 speed which is usually fast enough to go first in most situations i always try to run a speed aura even if i'm running a go second team in live arena i have a decent amount of defense a decent amount of hp and 632 on the accuracy 632 plus the masteries usually enough i will say in 95 percent of scenarios to land the uh dance of time and reduce the cooldown of all enemy skills man i love me some yameko just in terms of stats real or, or artifacts defense percentage i have accuracy obviously on the chest i have speed on the boots with speed uh ascension stat and then i have accuracy on the banner as well with the trip speed roll actually let's burn it I have four of these bad boys. Give me an eight. Seven. 
that's big. <laughs> and you might think I'm overreacting, but you know, longtime players will know 367 now. I mean, every one speed makes a massive, massive difference when we're min maxing champions. So, accuracy on the chest, accuracy. And then, as I mentioned, two perceptions and one speed set on her as well. Uh, a couple more that I wanted to show really quickly, guys. I wanted to show one non legendary champion. I thought it would be fun. Seer, you're going to see when we go to Seer here. Yeah, she's not all ascended. She's not like super OP in terms of her artifacts. She does have great stats. Don't get me wrong. 102, 287, uh, 209 speed. But really, the reason she's a crown jewel, she makes that list, is because she has a six star crushing rend, which is. What happens? Insane insanely good guys uh trust me on this one every hit will ignore a percentage of the target's defense one percent defense for every 10 levels now every hit doesn't matter as much because she's killing everybody in the first hit anyway but if you can get a six star seer this is why she should be on everybody's 2x epic wish list right it's only a 2x but just put her there because if you can get this one percent for every 10 levels instead of 25 40 or 50 right 1% for every 10 levels. They have like 350 levels. Daddy, chill. So it's massive ignore defense. Uh, it is the best blessing in the game when at six stars for damage dealing, in my opinion. Uh, it's so good. Even in PvP, I mean, you're still ignoring an extra 6% defense on every single hit and getting all the stat bonuses it's best obviously in pve but it's still really good so that's my seer i consider her a crown jewel of the old account i really do she's she's so good guys one more that i wanted to mention really quickly one of my personal favorites again the gear is not going to blow you away compared to some of these other champions on the account i guess two more one like super honorable i just got a plus four mithrala and i have triple perception sets i have over a thousand uh, accuracy when you add up the resistance and accuracy and over 100k uh, on the HP there. Triple perception, I think, is the way to go on Mithrala, but you can definitely make the case to go other ways too, like Relentless. And, and there's a few different builds for Mithrala out there, but I wanted to show some love really quickly to Contra the Cyclone. You guys know if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time how much I love Contra. She's just amazing, right? Uh, some defense. I built her as a nuker and a debuffer so 247 she's nice and fast and she can nuke and she's in that reflex right so she's hydra this is a hydra champion she's one of my favorite hydra champions in the game tim for my money she's the second best provoker inside the entire game guys if her hydra clan boss with this no escape 75 percent chance of placing a provoke for one turn on enemies under five or more debuffs at the start of this champion's turn you know, if you have a good balanced team, you're always going to be landing a provoke or having a 75% every single time. Uh, I love her after Molly Tankar. She's my second fave. Uh, and then I have her again in Reflex. That way, 40% chance to reduce a random skill cooldown by one turn. It's always going to go right to the A2. It's the only a possible skill that can be reduced. It's already on a three turn cooldown. It's already attacking three times. We're already landing so many debuffs and now we're doing it potentially every other turn. It's insane. I love Contra, if you can't tell. And she smacks in terms of damage here. One away, as I said, 247. So I've got it all. A real nice blend. Guys, these are, these are the crown jewels of yours truly account. Who are you most proud of in terms of builds in this game? I do realize, too, that I didn't have many, like a couple reflex or one reflex. Uh, a lot of perception, bolster, righteous, stone skin, but I didn't have anything like super outside the box. So maybe I'll come in with more obscure builds that are really good, like some curse sets or something like that in a future follow-up video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I don't know if it was good or bad, honestly. Usually I feel good about videos when I'm done recording this one. I am not sure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.